brand new year gets underway as the UIM F1H20 World Championship kicks off its 31st season in magnificent Doha, Qatar. Doha has become a regular stop on the F1H20 calendar, cementing its reputation as a powerboating capital of the world. This city has it all. It's the kind of place where you can immerse yourself in the local heritage, walk amid a living history, lose yourself in labyrinthine alleys and streets, and find hidden treasures along the way. But there's also another Doha, one that towers out of the sands. A Doha of space-age technology, state-of-the-art infrastructure, and dazzling skyscrapers. A city of lights that is alive and kicking day and night. This is a city that is home to major global institutions. One that hosts some of the biggest sporting events in the world, including the MotoGP, the UIM Aquabike and Nations Cup Championships, and in 2022, the FIFA World Cup. Truly impressive. The F1H20 Championship heads to Qatar for the 10th time. The event is always a delight for local fans taking place off the beautiful park and tree-lined Corniche in Doha Bay. Now let's meet some of the big contenders. teams and 14 riders lining up to fight for the championship crown with Team Abu Dhabi not competing in this round. The man to beat is Alex Carella. He's the back-to-back -back triple world champion. Last year, the final round in Sharjah came down to a nail-biting winner-take-all final race between Sammy Celio, Sean Torrente, Philip Schiap, and Alex Carella. Anyone could have taken it but Carella gave a masterful performance that earned him his third world title in a row. He's just one shy of equaling Guido Capellini's record of four in a row. Now he's racing on home waters for Team Qatar. He's got a new boat on the way, but he still wears the same old lucky shoe. I love this new course from last year. Last year I broke at two laps to the end, I was leading, so this year I want to do these two laps. I want really to push hard for take a win here in Doha because I miss it and I want to try to win for the first time here in Doha and, uh, and start in the best way the championship. No doubt one of Corella's biggest rivals will once again be his very own teammate, Sean Torrente. The man from Miami is a gutsy driver. He puts it all on the line, but so many times the big win has eluded him. It was here in Doha that he got his first ever F1H20 Grand Prix win last year, and he closed the season world runner-up. Now the defending Qatar Grand Prix champion is more determined than ever to make this his year. So this year we want to improve. We want to continue to be in the mix. We want to continue to improve our program and hopefully put a little distance so it ain't so tight between all the rest of us. There's constant improvements always in, in the engine department. Brendan never stops with that. Um, and then the boats, um, we try to be self-aware enough to know what our weaknesses are. For example, we know in real smooth water and qualifying, Sammy and even Philippe might have a little bit better setup. So we're trying to improve the boats in that direction. If there's one guy who can throw a wrench in Team Qatar's plans, it's the finish two. Oh. Two 
two-time world champion Sammy Celio of Mad Croc Baba Racing Team. Celio entered the last round in Sharjah, leading the championship points, but he tragically crashed his new boat in qualifying, ending his hopes for a third world championship. Now he's back with a new boat, and he means business. A major force to be reckoned with is last year's world number three, Frenchman Philippe Schiap. He's one of the fastest, most experienced, and most consistent drivers on the tour. Yes, for this season, uh, we have um, good preparation, uh, strong preparation for me. Uh, training in Abu Dhabi in the uh, beginning of the February and uh, physical preparation very, very strong and uh, I'm ready for Doha. His 2014 campaign got off to a rough start, however, as Shiap crashed out in practice ahead of qualifying. Also, two new drivers joined the tour. Eric Stark is back, this time racing for Team Nautica alongside Maritz Stromoy. And Marco Gambi of Italy joins Motorglass F1 team, the former Singa F1 Racing. A former champion who also took a dip in Doha Bay right after Shiap was 2008 Qatar Grand Prix winner Jonas Anderson of Team Sweden, who had a heavy crash toward the end of morning practice and had to fix his boat and replace his engine in time for qualifying. That shows just how much a factor the conditions will be here in Doha, which is notorious for shifting gusts, large sea swells, and choppy erratic waves. Due to poor weather conditions, organizers had to pare down the course to a five-pin, two-kilometer circuit with one right-hander. The hardest part, it's, it's challenging, but the hardest part is coming down the back stretch because it's the longest straightaway of the course. You're going over 130 miles an hour, 200 kilometers an hour, and then there's big rollers and the wind's in your face, and even if the boat is level, it can touch off one of those and almost blow over like I did in the race last year. So it makes it really tough there. Um, radio men are really important. They got a spot in front of you. If someone gets out of shape in front of you to let you know, it's going, to be, it's going to be an adventure. The qualifying is divided into three rounds. Q1 reduces the field to 10 boats. Q2 narrows it down to six. And in Q3, drivers get two laps each and the course to themselves on clean water to post their fastest lap time in their quest for the all-important pole position. Conditions were choppy with shifting winds. Uh, you cannot play safe here. Uh, the field of drivers is very strong. You have 11 drivers, 10, 11 drivers that can easily go into the top six. So. If you play safe, you are out of top six. Um, let's see, like I told before, uh, let's see how the water, what the water brings us. And uh, of course, not doing stupid things, not taking risks that you don't need, but of course, you have to push very hard since lap one. In Q1, it was a disappointing session for the three Motorglass F1 team drivers. Francesco Cantando, the driver with the most wins and podiums on the tour, struggled with his new package after losing his last boat in a crash here in Doha last year. His teammate, newcomer Marco Gambi, was nearly three seconds off the pace. And Bartek Marsalek came close, but was edged out for 10th spot by Duarte Benavente of F1 GC Atlantic team. Newcomer Eric Stark was also unable to make the cut. In Q2, Marit Stromoy of Team Nautica pushed till the end to try and get a top six result, but she had to settle for ninth on the starting grid. Young Philip Roms of Mad Croc Baba Racing Team and Xiang Ziwei of China CTIC Team were also off the pace. But the big rivalry was between Benevente and Torrente. The Portuguese driver held on precariously to sixth, with Torrente unable to find the pace to beat him until the final few minutes, knocking Benevente down to seventh. But Benevente's teammate, Yusuf al Rubai. <laughs> Oh. 
qualified for Q3 in second position, with Anderson, who crashed out earlier in the day, posting the fastest time in both Q1 and Q2. Q3. First out was Philip Schiap, but conditions proved tricky for him. Bad condition, for sure. No, it's like a lottery. One lap, uh, it's uh, not too much rough. And the second lap is completely destroyed. Very, very dangerous. Uh, I don't like it. It's, it's, uh, it's like a lottery, for sure. Next up, Sean Torrente. He went all out as usual, regardless of the tricky conditions. And set a blistering time of 41.44 seconds to take provisional pole. It wasn't terrible, but I don't know if it's enough. You know what I mean? I don't know if I'm good enough. We'll see. We had such a fight in the last session because we missed the, we missed the water and it uh, cost us big time. I had to fight just to get in. Sammy Celio went out there gunning for his third pole in Doha. He had the right setup for the day and beat out Torrente by just three hundredths of a second, taking provisional pole. Time defending world champion Alex Carrilla was fast, but he just didn't have an answer to Torrente and Celio's pace. That left one man, Jonas Anderson, a former pole winner here. He was the fastest out there all day, and in Q3, despite a close call or two, he was even faster, setting an incredible time to edge Celio by seven hundredths of a second to take his second pole position in Doha. Incredible good. For sure we will try our best. I uh, crashed the boat this morning and I didn't think I'm going, even going to be in the qualifying. But the, my team is the best and they have uh, worked the whole day. So now we have the pool and it, it's incredible. No, the boat is so nice to drive and it's, it's perfect and uh, I really like this condition. There were stormy conditions ahead of the race. Teams and officials discussed whether it was safe to proceed, but preparations went underway regardless. A cruel blow for pole winner Jonas Anderson, who broke an engine in morning practice, so he starts back in 11th. That meant Celio would start in pole. Yeah, okay, I got the pole because uh, Jonas break down in the morning free warm up and he must change the engine, so pity for him, but okay, a little bit lucky to earn the pole, I cannot complain. The bigger thing today is going to be the weather. I mean, the wind comes and goes, it's very strong. Looks like it's going to be very rough if we get it in. Hopefully we can get it in, but, you know, we just want it to be a race and not just a matter of survival. So we have uh, a short window of time to decide what to do. We are trying our best in the, in the time we have. And now, so far we are uh, ruling this race minute after minute. This is the situation. Winds were still strong as boats struggled to line up on the start pontoon. Thirteen drivers lined up for the start. Francesco Cantando would race in number 23 in lieu of Marco Gambi. The conditions remained gusty with 18 knot winds as the final countdown got underway. The lights go off, the first race of 2000. Oh. For 
counting begins. Philip Schiap off to a good start, pulling ahead of the field on the 450 meter straightaway to the commitment boy. Anderson and Benevente pull ahead of Philip Roms. Benevente goes wide, crossing into Anderson's path. It's a great start from the two Qatar boats as Torrente and Corella take charge, leaving pole sitter Celio in their wake. Torrente has the advantage as they round the turn and head down the straightaway to boy number three. Bartek Marsalek in 10th position, battling through the spray of the other boats. Entering the first of this 40 lap race, Celio is third, Shiap fourth, then the two F1 GC Atlantic team boats. Torrente and Corella head to head on turn number three, the American on the inside keeping ahead of his teammate. Torrente enjoying clear waters up ahead as Corella gives chase, heading toward the yellow right-hander. Jonas Anderson has already progressed from his 11th place start to move up to 7th position behind Moritz Stromoy as they come around the yellow boy. Anderson goes tight on boy number 1, passing Stromoy on the inside to move up into 6th. There's Sammy Celio. he had a bad start and has a lot of water to cover if he's to win his first ever Qatar Grand Prix. We see Celio veer off the circuit there to the left of Benevente, he's in trouble. Sammy Celio's race ends with a broken engine and yet another win eludes him in Doha. The defending Qatar Grand Prix champion in command of this race, more than two seconds ahead of Corella. Shiap moving up into third after Celio pulls out. Al Rubayan and his F1 GC Atlantic teammate Benevente both in the top five just ahead of three Scandinavians, Anderson, Stromoy and Stark, followed by Francesco Cantando. Cantando trying to catch up with a Team Nautica boats up ahead, the Italian setting his sights on Stark. So far the roles have been reversed from last year when it was Alex Corella who led the Qatar GP with Torrente on his tail until a final lap when Corella broke down giving Torrente the win. Jonas Anderson comes around boy number four heading to the yellow boy number five but he slows down Anderson is veering off the course. Just three laps down and the top two qualifiers are already out. First Celio, now Anderson, as his quest for a repeat of his 2008 win here comes to an end. In lap four, Torrente opens his lead to over 2.7 seconds over Corella. She up third, Aurubayan and Benevente rounding out the top five ahead of Stromoy and Stark. Benevente is driving a new Baba boat as he pursues his teammate Aurubayan racing in a DAC. Aurubayan got points in all races last year and both he and Benevente have been on an upward graph. But his consistent run comes to an end as he pulls off the course and Benevente moves into fourth. The Portuguese driver finished fourth here last year, can he do it again? Sean Torrente going from strength to strength out there as he maintains his command of this race, keeping that gap between him and the three-time defending world champion Corella as Team Qatar dominates in home waters. Just behind the Qatar boats is the ever-consistent Philip Schiap, who's finished on the podium in his last five races in a row, although he was subsequently DQ'd here in Doha last year. He laps his China CTIC teammate Zhang Ziwei, but he has a big gap to fill if he's to catch Alex Corella. Moritz Stromoy, continuing her string of excellent results, is in fifth spot. She also got fifth here in Qatar last year, followed by a career best fourth place finish in Abu Dhabi. Just behind her is her new teammate and accomplished F2 champion Eric Stark in number 51. But Stark pulls out in lap four and that reduces the field down to nine boats. Torrente and Corella, the top two drivers of 2013, now weaving their way through the back markers as Corella keeps up the pursuit of his teammates. Torrente, a four-time North American F1 champion in his fourth season of the... <laughs> oh, 
F1 H2O Tour. Further back is the winningest driver on the F1 H2O Tour, Francesco Cantando, in his 18th season, making his way through the field in the number 23 boat. He laps his teammate Bartek Marsowek of Poland in lap 16. Marsowek stays out wide and lets Cantando pass. The youngest driver on the tour, Philip Roms, keeps Mad Croc hopes alive in sixth position. Torrente keeps up his fantastic speed. What a comeback Torrente's had since his suspension in 2012. Taking his first podium and then his first race win to finish 2013 world number two. He just missed the world title last year and he wants that title badly this time around. But first, he has to worry about his teammate, Corella, who just missed out on a win here last year. Philip Schiap is a podium regular, but he only won his first ever race last year in Kiev. He continues in third, trying to make his way past Francesco Cantando. But just when things were going well for the leader, Torrente, he slows down on the 31st lap. The American driver has a problem with his boat, the top of his cockpit is off, and he's pulling off the circuit. That puts Corella into the number one spot. What a turn of events, considering last year, Corella dropped out to give Torrente the win. Behind Corella, Schiap now in second position. Benevente in third with a shot at his first podium in 36 races. Cantando moving up to fourth spot. Young Philip Roms with a shot at his best result ever now if he can hold on to fifth ahead of Stromoy. Duarte Benevente seems to have adapted well to his switch from the Jonathan Jones built and designed Dragon Boat to Massimo Ruggiero's Baba. He's a 15 year veteran of the tour with 116 starts and four podiums. Can he make this his fifth career podium as the field narrows down to eight boats? Into the last lap, Alex Carella is beyond reach of Schiap, but surely he'll be haunted by memories of last year when he broke down in the last lap. Doesn't seem like Carella will be having any such problems this year though, as the Italian three-time defending world champion wins the first race of the 2014 season in style, crossing the checkered flag. Great result also for China's CTIC team as Xiap is runner-up. And in third spot, completing the podium is Duarte Benevente. The man of the day, Corella. Great result for Team Qatar, but shame for Torrente. We think the power steering caught fire. It uh, just started to smoke filled the boat when I left turn three, I guess it was. And I started screaming, I think it's on fire, smelled it. But then the trim stopped working. So now you can't drive it and I think it's on fire. So I didn't know what to do after that. I was doing zigzags out there looking for a boat or whatever, but I just can't say enough about our boats. I mean, we're out there in a comfortable pace in really rough conditions. And, and I look up and, and, and my radio man, Brendan says, next boat is, is Shepe and he's third. So just take your time. And when you have a piece like that, it hurts not to get a win. I mean, it's just, when you have a boat that good and you don't win, it just drives you nuts. Cantando fourth. Great result for Philip Roms in fifth. Stromoy sixth. Also best ever result for another youngster, Leo Jiang. And Marshoek picks up three valuable points. The team standings at the end of round one. Team Qatar at the top with 22 points. Three clear of China CTIC with F1 GC Atlantic team in third. About this race, it was great for me, great. Uh, slowly, slowly I'm coming back. I had very seven very difficult seasons in Formula One uh, with equipment that um, it was not as competitive as the one I have now. I'm working with, uh, with um, Dave DeWald with the props, I'm working with Nico Van Eichelen with engines and everything is coming really well together and this new Baba boat is absolutely great. Yes, very strange of the condition, uh, wind and um, little uh, wave, but wind is very, very strong and uh, it's very difficult to stay uh, on the straight line and the full throttle and the boat uh, fly. Uh, everywhere, 
every time. It's very, very difficult and uh, I uh, make a safe race for finish uh, for the championship. Yeah, it was, was great, okay. It was a great fight until 30, 10 laps to the end, uh, until Sean broke, but uh, okay. I really enjoyed the race and for sure the first lap with Sean was one of the best ever exciting lap I make. So, okay, we start with a victory and we finish last day with a victory, so perfect start of the season. Okay. The world standings at the end of round one. Corella on 20 points, Shiap 15, Benevente 12. Strong point start also for Roms, Stromoy, Zhong, and Marsoek. That concludes another Grand Prix of Qatar. See you in round two of the 2014 UIM F1 H2O World Championship. <laughs>